For the treatment of type 2 diabetes, the 2024 ADA standards of care place a greater emphasis on the importance of weight management in the treatment of type 2 diabetes while always advocating for individualized treatment approaches. But the 2024 standards really strengthen the guidelines for pharmacotherapy, frankly, because we now have these great drugs that help patients lose weight and control their diabetes. And they state obesity pharmacotherapy should be considered for people with diabetes and overweight or obesity along with lifestyle changes. Now, I'm a big believer in lifestyle change, but I do think that many people need more help. So that combining these new therapies that we have for the treatment of overweight and obesity with lifestyle can make a big difference. The standards now include recommendations that we go beyond BMI in terms of measuring how patients are doing with their weight loss program. And I think this is important because obviously people can lose both fat mass and lean body mass. And you want to make sure that we're not shifting people towards a less healthy state of being. So they recommend such things as weight circumference measurements, waist to hip ratio, and or waist to height ratios. And they also talk about monitoring obesity-related anthropometric measurements, at least annually, to inform treatment considerations. And I think we just need to be mindful of patients and, again, encouraging lifestyle, but really insofar as we're able to monitor how these changes are affecting patients' overall body composition. So the treatment algorithm overall for the management of type 2 diabetes looks at these three basic goals weight management, glycemic control, and cardiorenal risk reduction. And as in every guideline, everything needs to be individualized based on the patient's circumstances and what they have access to, what's right for the patient. But I think we need to think potentially a bit more aggressively. The guidelines have been changed to say that early combination therapy should be considered in adults with type 2 diabetes at treatment initiation to shorten time to attainment of individualized treatment targets. And I know we've been kind of walking up to this as a possibility, and it can be at times hard to get insurance companies to pay for this, but it does make sense to do the most we can at the outset to get patients down to their treatment goals to help reduce the risk of therapeutic inertia. It is further stated that in adults with type 2 diabetes without cardiovascular and or kidney disease, pharmacologic agents should address both individualized glycemic and weight goals. In individuals who are obese and or overweight, both GLP-1 receptor agonists and dual GIP, GLP-1 receptor agonists, are preferred to the use of insulin in the management of their type 2 diabetes. Now, obviously, patients may end up on insulin, but if you can, using an incretin hormone is preferred. On cardiorenal risk reduction and management, the standards say that adults who have type 2 diabetes and established or a high risk of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, heart failure, or CKD, treatment regimens should include agents that reduce cardiovascular and kidney disease risk, such as SGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 receptor agonists. And I think everybody should review section 9, and all the tables and figures within it because it really talks in detail about how we choose which agents for the management of our patients with type 2 diabetes. In section 10, there is an update following the FDA approval of sotagliflozin, which is the first dual SGLT1, SGLT2 inhibitor. It is recommended for use in patients with type 2 diabetes and established heart failure with either preserved or reduced ejection fraction. There is a recommendation that was revised to recommend the monitoring of the EGFR and serum potassium levels 
within 7 to 14 days after initiation of treatment with an ACE inhibitor ARB mineralocorticoid receptor agonist or diuretic and then at least annually. There were also recommendations added to include screening of adults for asymptomatic heart failure and they suggested consider screening adults with diabetes by measuring a natriuretic peptide and an N-terminal pro-BNP peptide to facilitate prevention of heart failure. Finally, the 2024 Standards of Care provided updates to align with the latest consensus report on diabetes management in chronic kidney disease by the ADA and the Kidney Disease Improving Global Outcomes, or KDGO, guidelines. And they have this wonderful new figure that I really like. It's figure 11.1. And many of you will have seen this figure before because it basically illustrates chronic kidney disease progression. But it now includes different colors and different information, which includes the frequency of visits and who to refer to nephrologists according to the EGFR and albuminuria. So I like this table, and I think it will be useful for those of us in practice to use to see when and how we should manage our patients with CKD and when we should refer them. So those are my updates to the 2024 ADA standards of care. And to some, it may seem like slow progress, but I really believe it's real progress. And I really commend the committee, the professional practice committee who wrote these guidelines for all of their efforts. Thank you.